Hello everybody, this is Lehman Crafton Jr. aka Zorval Chan Less Than Guru with I believe is my 14th day of the uh, character 31 day character creation challenge. So I'm getting very close to the halfway mark and I will say I'm getting pretty desperate. Um, I do not own a ton and ton and ton of RPGs so that's why I'm doing multiple editions of like D&D. There will probably be a time where every day or every other day is going to be some type of Palladium game because I used to be a complete Palladium fanboy and I still have uh, most of all the books that I collected back then. And because I'm not a person who sells or gives up things that I have, which I've explained before. But today we're going to do the, uh, the, it was a, uh, what I want to call revised or updated rule of Gamma World, which was a crazy, zany, sci-fi, mutant type world uh, that TSR produced when they were producing D&D uh, uh, &D and AD&D. &D. When D&D 4th edition came out, they did this Gamma World. And it does use kind of very similar to rules to the, the fourth edition D&D, but it is kind of still that craziness. It wasn't a direct um, conversion. As you can see, it's a much smaller book. It, it came in a boxed set that had some character tokens and a couple of maps. And actually, it came with a, a card deck and uh, I think one booster pack. So there might have been extra booster packs. but kind of a zany thing. The other thing was uh, in 4th edition, unlike other editions of D&D, &D, which go up to 20 levels, 4th edition D&D &D went up to 30 levels, and they broke it up into three tiers. 1 through 10 was, was uh, I think, heroic tier. 11 through 20 was what they called a paragon tier, tier. And then 21 through 30 was epic tier. So the Gamma World is only 1 through 10, so it's only the, the first tier, the what would be heroic in D&D. &D. But it was compatible enough that you could take some weird, crazy stuff out of here and throw it into uh, the D&D &D 4th edition, like some of the, the weapons and powers and, and stuff like that, mutations. But um, I'm going to go over the, the character sheet and make a character. As you can see, it's a small character sheet. The uh, the book or the the box set came with the character sheets, and they were small. And I just photocopied it with one page, so it is much more simpler, uh, fun uh, little game. I and even if I if I ever do fourth edition again, I get to some things. I might throw in some of this stuff because it is kind of a a fun fun game. It has lots of craziness so i'm gonna move the box and mars will probably jump up here and start annoying me she's already giving me looks but again here is the uh the character sheet yeah i'm a world character sheet they kind of break it up into each step uh, how to uh, do things and then a lot of this beginning part of the book is just kind of showing you how when you're doing tactical stuff on the grid um, what it means basic uh, D, D rules for the grid like i said it's based off of fourth edition but Say what you want to say, 3rd edition pretty much assumed you, you had a grid also, so I don't see the difference besides they decided to simplify things and call them squares instead of 5 feet, but you can always divide by 5 feet to get a square, or times by 5 feet to go from square to feet, so I never saw a big deal with that, but okay, let's get off the rant and get in with making characters. So, basically, it's really simple. Um, there's seven steps, I guess. 
which I guess the seventh one is drawing cards or getting them from the, the deck. So I, I actually have not opened the deck, so I might skip that um, for this. Mar, stop trying to cl climb me. Um, but we'll we'll do everything else in it. And basically, it's really simple. It tells you what things that you get, characters, statistics, how many hit points. Uh, bloodied value was an interesting concept that for edition had where um, when you became bloodied, which was half of your hit points, things started um, affecting you negatively. So it wasn't just um, you fought the exact same way from full hit points to one hit point, and then at zero things change. So they had a bloody value. Um, they do a simple hit points per level gained is five. So there's no like character classes or things like that. They had different, uh, in D&D in &D 4th edition and in this Gamma world, instead of having saving throws, basically everybody rolled against something. So it takes kind of into effect that instead of wizards having in priests, basically spellcasters, instead of having their spells memorized and they always worked, it's just that the thing saves versus them Mars, 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 Mars. Um, basically, it was always the player had to defeat the reflexes or the will or the uh, fortitude defense. And then that basically, it then uh, what I want to say, just like armor class would. So basically, they put everything on the player side instead of having the defender makes saves on sometimes but not with armor class they kind of just try to do everything the same a lot of people didn't like it so they changed it back but i actually like that idea of the the wizard has to succeed just like the fighter has to succeed and it's not the fighter has to succeed and the wizard has to not be resisted so but that's, I'm just kind of explaining why these defenses are there. And then you have a speed, uh, initiative modifier, attack bonuses with weapons, or with the power, and then different skills. So, what do we get? And then, like I said, there's only a 10th level. You get an uber feature at <laughs> 10th. Alpha mutations. So just lots of kind of fun, wacky things. So let's see if uh, character origins. Okay, so you can name your character, but I usually do that at the end. So you roll character origins. You can pick, but when you have when you're trying to have a zany, crazy game like Gamma World, I I like that randomness. So you basically pick, or you don't. You pick or roll. I'll roll. And you get two origins, and sometimes the origins might not make a lot of sense together, but you can try to to uh, to make it. So let's just uh, we got d twenties here. It says determine your two character origins. Roll two d twenties and consult the table for each result. Your first roll determines your primary origin, and your second roll determines your secondary origin. If your second is the same, then your second origin is engineered human okay so is there any primary engineered human it doesn't look like it so the only way that you are engineered human is if you roll the same thing twice okay and then it's always a secondary so let's go for the primary origin so I got a five, which is an electrokinetic. So I'm assuming something to do with electricity. So traits, origins one and two. So we got one is a electrokinetic. And then two is a nine, a hawkoid. So I'm like a Hawkman 
who does something with electricity. So you can see there um, the, the uh, Did I roll a five or a four? Did I miss up? Huh. Do I make this video over again? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stitch this to the next video because I don't wanna cheat. I don't wanna say electrokinetic if I rolled a five. Because I'm thinking I might have rolled a five. So I'm going to cut and then I'll come back after reviewing the video earlier. And then I will make sure that I said what I actually rolled. So I'm sorry, but I want to be fair. Okay, so I looked back and I did roll a five. So I was wrong. I read the chart wrong. I am an empath, not a electrokinetic. So I am an empath. Oh, boy. So again, I didn't want to seem like I was uh, cheating there. I just, when I looked at the, the chart, I'm sideways and I, I kind of got off there. So, sorry about that. But I am a, an empath hawkoid. So using character origins, traits, mutant types, identifies the primary Ability score for origin and origin power source. You gain a plus two to overcharge rolls on alpha that have the same power source as your primary origin. Each origin also shows the abilities you gain that are specific to your origins. You gain traits for both of your origins. If two traits cannot be reconciled, you only get the trait of your primary origin. Okay. Critical, your origin also determines the special effect or bonus damage you gain when you score a critical hit. When you reach second, you get a critical benefit of one of your origins, your choice. At sixth level, you gain a critical benefit of your other origin. And both benefits apply when you score a critical hit. So we won't have to worry about that at a level one. But it gives you something to look forward to. When you're playing power is gain the powers of both origins as indicated on the character advancement table at first level you have the novice power of each of your origins and then your basic species and body form is determined or influenced by your origins your character's race falls into one of five broad categories a mutated animal artificial plant humanoid or human so it's pretty much being a hawkoid and an empath, which would, to me, at first sound like some type of psychic character. So it pretty much seems like it's going to be a mutated animal um, as my appearance. So I think we're going to go that. I don't think I really have to reconcile uh, contrary origins, what they kind of talk about here would be uh, seismic and hawkoid. So if I was a rocky hawk, how could I fly? But then they go, okay, you're a gargoyle. So they kind of ways to, to do that. So my primary was empath. So here's the, uh, the empath. You manipulate emotions and life energy. Can you read? And again, I don't know why this thing sometimes focuses right away when I get close, and the other times it doesn't. There we go. See, I have no idea why it does it. Empath, you manipulate emotions and life energy the way an artist uses paint. Your touchy feeling powers. Let you heal your allies or harm or pacify your foes. You usually know who's having a bad day. You unconsciously mimic the emotional states of creatures around you. Your friends panic. You echo their terror. <laughs> when you're with a weepy drunk, you inevitably end up crying into your beer, too. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Mutant type, charisma, psi, plus two to psi overcharge. Skill bonus level one, gain a plus four to insight checks. Pacifying aura, you and each ally adjacent to you never 
Grant Combat Advantage. Vital Presence, ally is adjacent to you gain plus five, bonus to death save. Empath Critical, so we don't have to worry about that one. And then Vitality Transfer is my Charisma plus my level versus a Fortitude. And if I hit, then the target is weakened until the end of my next turn. In addition, you or one ally within five squares gains temporary hit points equal to your Charisma modifier. So where are... Okay, so it said I get a plus two. Or Charisma Mutant Type, Charisma Psy, plus two to Psy Overcharge. Hmm. Each origin provides a skill bonus, and you gain a plus four bonus to one random skill. Okay, so this one's was the plus five, wait, plus four to insight. Okay, so I got a plus four. Insight. Plus your level, which would be level one. So the total so far would be level five. And then let me go to the uh, Hawkoid. So here is the, the Hawkoid Wisdom Bio. Plus two to Bio Overcharge. I guess I could have looked at so. All right, this has Terrifying Shriek as the Hawkoid Novice, and that's something that I guess I write here. So that was, I'll look back on the other one, Terrifying Shriek. Um, just don't have to worry about critical levels yet. Oh, I wrote the origins wrong. Empathic Hawkoid. I wrote it in traits. I just saw where it said one and two. Well, let me go back to the empath. So here, let's see. Empathic Hawkoid. Empath, I guess, empath. And then here, I'm going to write down my, my two traits. Here. So the trait one is traits origin one and two. Charisma psi plus two to psi. Charisma psi plus two to psi overcharge. I wrote my skill bonus down here. Vitality Transfer. I don't get uh, Empath Utilities or Experts until later, and I guess I would uh, choose which one that is. You get 18 in the primary ability score of your first origin and 16 for your second origin. So... 18 would be Charisma, and 16, um, I'll have to go back to the, the Hawkoid, but I think it was Wisdom. And roll 3d6 for each remaining. Next, see the ability modifier for each score. Okay. Charisma, okay. So your, your first and second, you don't get a Roll. So wisdom is going to be a 16. 
And then the mutant type was bio, so I'll put wisdom bio and plus two to bio overcharge. And then I gain a plus four to perception checks. So I'll put that plus four to perception. And then plus my one is a plus five. I get the fly speed equal to my speed. While flying, you take a negative two penalty to, to attacks, and then I don't have to worry about the, the critical. So now I will roll 3d6 for all the other ones. So let me get out my big, bigger d6s I've been seen. So strength is 13. Constitution is 10. Dexterity is pretty low, 5. Intelligence is 9. I'm a clumsy hawk empath. Uh, or empathic, uh, hawkish empath? Empath is meant. And oh, and then my wisdom and charisma are already there. So 13 strength, 10 constitution, 5 dexterity, 9 uh, intelligence, 16 wisdom, and 18 charisma. So hit points was 12 plus. Constitution and then five per level after first. Okay, but first I gotta check to see in the book. It said that there would be, and it, to to show you some of the the fun things that can be, you can be android, cockroach, doppelganger, electrokinetic, like I thought I was, empath. Felinoid, cat people, a giant gravity controller, hawkoid, hypercognitive, mind breaker, mind coercer, plant, pyrokinetic, radioactive rat swarm, seismic speedster, telekinetic, and yeti, and human engineered. So lots and lots of crazy stuff if you think you can be pretty much any two of these things mixed up. So ability scores would be pretty much the same as they have been in, in D and D. But just to, to be sure, my thirteen is a plus one, so my strength is a plus one. Ten is a zero. Five is going to be low is a negative three. Nine is a negative one. And they have little pluses here, so I have to write plus negative. <laughs> uh, wisdom is an 18. Is a four. Or sorry, 16. 16. Was a oh, 16 was a 3. And then 18 for my charisma was a 4. So there's all my attributes. And then at first level, you have one explorer's kit and everything in it. You also make 1d4 plus 1 rolls on the starting gear table. So that was something I also thought was kind of humorous is that it's basically some random stuff that you scrounge around um, but skills in addition to natural gifts represented by your ability scores your character's talents also measured in variety of specific the aptitude are called skills you have a basic competence in every skill any hero can try to basically do skills you get an initial plus four to checks using the skill that you roll. In addition to these skill bonuses, roll a d10 and consult it. Ah, you get an additional four to that one. Uh,
your bonus to the same skill. More than one source. Add together all the bonuses you get. Mm -hmm. Ah, gear can add penal penalties or bonuses. So I get one more skill off the D10. So 10 is stealth, which is a dexterity skill. Ah, I get it. What's four? Stealth. Let me take away those five. Okay. Now I get it. So insight is a wisdom. So my four plus my 16 of wisdom. is seven so that would actually be a plus eight total my perception is a wisdom also so that would be three plus four also eight and then stealth because my dex is a negative three it would be plus four minus three plus one so that would be a plus two and then pretty much anything else would be based off of my uh, ability for the the, uh, the skills. So they have just ten skills: acrobatics, athletics, conspiracy, insight, interaction, mechanics, nature, perception, science, and stealth. Mars. Those cords are for vital equipment, not for you to chew on. He's getting very agitated because I'm not letting him jump up on here. So there's just some skill descriptions. Um, then you can pick out personality appearance and things like that. Um, you would pull out a that, like I said that alpha mutation card, which I'm not going to do, but basically that uh, you can overcharge. So I get the plus two to overcharge for psi and bio. There is bio, dark, and psi energy. And then there's some, I guess, omega tech cards. So there's alpha mutations and omega tech. So scavenge gear. I want to see where that, the gear thing was. Your gear. Choose your armor and weapon. At first level, you have one explorer kit. You also make a gear starting on a D4 plus one rolls on starting gear table. Gear, mundane gear, and mega. I'm trying to figure out where the. Uh... Okay, so starting gear is here. So I get a D4 plus one. So let me roll uh, my D4. So I rolled a four. You can see that even if it's blurry. There we go. Four. So that's five, five, five starting pieces of equipment. That's not too bad. The maximum there's a D20 with the possibility of rolling twice. Um, so 15. Is a generator, eight hours of fuel. Four is a keel boat. I'm a flying person who apparently has a boat. Capacity 10 tons, speed 2 miles per hour, requires a crew of at least 4. <laughs> that is crazy. 6, which is a draft horse with no wagon. Nineteen, which is a water purifier, water not included. And then my last item 
is an 18, which is a pickup truck. So I got a lot of ways to uh, travel. I can fly, I have a boat, I have a horse, and I have a pickup truck. So that is kind of funny. So hit points is just uh, 12 plus constitution. Uh, I believe that it would be the, the modifier. So let's see if I can, if I can find that. Calculate your hit points. 12 plus your constitution score. Not bonus. Okay, so my constitution is 10. So I believe then that would give me a 12 plus 10. So 22 hit points. And then half of that would be bloodied, which would be 11. A uh, speed. Let's see what that says. Dex is it's based on Dex. I'm not doing well there. Uh, speed six plus or minus any modifier. So six minus the three. So I'm at a speed of three. Okay. Armor class, 10 plus your level, so that would be 11, plus armor bonus and shield bonus. Choose your armor and weapons. At first level, you have one experience. You also may choose your armor and weapons. So I get to use armor and weapons? Take armor, one melee weapon, one ranged, and an explorer kit, and call it good. Okay, so um, I don't want to reduce my speed anymore, so I'm going to take light armor. So let's see, here's some of the AC. Determine your defense. So I'm just, I don't, I guess I'll write light armor and then a weapon. So I think with my strength strength 13, though, a heavy melee weapon might be good. And basically, it's not like I'm getting a knife or I'm getting this thing or this. And they all have, I guess, different things. Basically, a light melee weapon can be scissors, a bowie knife, a short length of rebar, machete, a baseball bat, souvenir katana, a heavy melee is going to be a board with a nail, a sledgehammer, an iron, uh, a speed limit sign with the post, parking meter, television, chainsaw, things like that. So that's kind of humorous. So, and, and again, see, they, they don't really break it up. It's just heavy, one-handed or two-handed. So, but let's not carry a shield and let's carry a big two-handed weapon two-handed heavy so attacks power weapon or salvage so two hand heavy and attack bonus or let, let's do the uh the armor first so i decided on light so let's go back to armor. Light armor gives plus three to armor. So if I look here, it's 10 plus level, which would be 11. And then your defenses are equal to 10 plus your level plus better. And I guess the, uh, the, the three would add to that. So that would be 14. And then, oh, the better dex or int. So my int is a one. So that would be. Uh, Let me count again, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15. And I'll go ahead and I'll fill in the int. And then fortitude is for, uh, oh, for AC add armor and shield bonuses, and only add desk or int, int if wearing light or no. So you only uh, choose int if you're wearing light or no, or only add either one of those if you're wearing light. So picking light was good then. So fortitude, strength, or con, my strength is better. Reflex is dex or int, so of course int's going to be better. And willpower is wisdom or charisma. Charisma is my high one there, so that is better. So fortitude is 10. So my starting is always going to be 11, and then the better of two scores. So uh, the strength is a, is a 1. Oh, my int's a negative 1. Ah! So that... Wow, it's still better than the negative three. <laughs> See, that's where the little plus thing is hard to to remember. I was looking at my strength, going, "How is that only a plus one when this is a is a plus one? That's negative one, negative three. So let me calculate again. Eleven minus that, so it's going to be a thirteen. Fortitude is strength, so that's a plus one, so that's 11, 12. Reflex doesn't include my AC, so that's going to be a 10. And willpower, though, is going to be that 11 plus 4, so that will be the 15. So 12, 10, and 15. Your attack bonus is your ability modifier plus your level plus the accuracy bonus for the weapon or power. So if I go here to that weapon chart, the, uh, the two-handed heavy weapon accuracy is two. So my uh, your attack bonus is your... Ability modifier, strength is a, is a 1, plus level, so that makes it a 2, and then 2 for the accuracy bonus is a plus 4. And then the damage dice for that one is a 2d8. Your damage bonus uses the same bonus as the attack bonus, plus either your level or tw twice your level. Um, I guess maybe twice your level would be for two-handed weapons. If there's a Okay. So then the damage bonus would be a plus two. And then my initiative is my dex mod plus my level. So I'm at a negative two plus any modifier. So I'm at a negative two to initiative. And then I would open up that card pack and I would uh, draw randomly an alpha mutation and a, a one omega, so one of those. But like I said, I'm not going to open that pack, but that would be something that I do. So, yes, so this is, I think, I, I, I kind of had read through some of this, but I had never played this. I thought when I was doing a D&D 4th edition that I might throw in some of these things. Um, there's uh, adventure published i believe it's the third and the six that would have places maybe that this could be in um, but i never got got to that so i never did uh, play this game but it looks like a fun little game uh, a lot of random stuff and crazy it's not going to take itself too seriously at all um so my empath hawkoid um, which I get a terrifying shriek, or I can uh, kind of 
hurt somebody and temporarily hit points to an ally and give them bonuses. Um, I ended up being quite slow, but I could fly. I have a horse, I have a pickup truck, and I have a boat. Um, so, oh, for for the uh, the name, I will call him being a hawkoid empath. I will call him Featherfield. <laughs> Because it's a crazy game and it doesn't have to make a lot of sense. So, again, this is Gamma World based off of the rule set of D&D 4th Edition that I bought that I thought just would be something fun. Um, a lot of the monsters in that uh, in here look, the, the stat blocks, just by looking at it, it looked like you could just take these right out of here and put it in D&D 4th Adventure. And the uh, the game master stat blocks for uh, threats were something that I always appreciated. Everything just fit kind of on a about the size of an index card. Even big nasty things wouldn't be too much, and it had all the information that you would need on that. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll end that here. If you like the video, you can hit like. If you dislike, you can hit dislike. If you want to subscribe, I would appreciate it. Um, and again, Gamma World role playing game rule book uh, based off of the fourth edition rule set. And that is, I do believe, the 14th day of the 31 day character creation challenge. Once again, I am. Lee McCrutton Jr., a.k.a. Zorbal Chan, less than guru, and I will catch you later.